job and I'm tired. <laughs> it was a heck of a game. Two great teams and just really proud of, of my, my team. I thought they were really special today. Toughness, um, just kept competing. Um, you know, Jazz is going to not be happy about her four, three turnovers, four turnovers, but she had five assists, six steals, six big rebounds, and uh, really did a good job on, on, on Taylor Murray, their point guard. Really, I thought uh, both those kids went at it today. Um, Kentucky's really good. And uh, I just thought that first quarter, you know, we, we really came out. We punched first. I really set the tone. We could have closed the half 26 to 9 if we hadn't had a glitch in the managing the clock. But we'll learn and we'll get better from that. But I just thought uh, that obviously was the difference in the game the first quarter. But uh, Jordan, you know, Jordan gutted it out and went 37 minutes, Jazz 38, Henriel 36, Chloe 37. That's a lot of minutes playing at that pace. Scored 86 points, y'all. Um, that's a lot of points, and uh, to out-rebound that group, 48-24, is uh, hard to do. 25 offensive boards, you don't get those standing around. So, disappointed in our turnovers, 24. We forced 22, but that's what they're doing. You know, Kentucky's turning people over, and uh, we didn't take such good care of the ball in our starting five, but uh, um, really made some big plays when we needed to. Obviously, you saw what life's like with Tierra in foul trouble, and um, she's got to be better. I've got to be better getting her ready to play. And, um, you know, she had a double-double, and Riel has 21-12 and 12 with a double-double. And Riel had to guard both their best players all night long. She either had Brian, number 10, or Macy Morris, number 4. Let me just say this. Uh, that Morse kid is a warrior. She is so good. Um, and it's just a tremendous competitor. And, you know, you, you can get caught up looking at film and watching them and this one's this, this one this. But at the end of the day, to me, that's, that, that's the heartbeat of their team. And she's the one that's been to so many wars. And listen, I've had my butt beat by her more times than I care to talk about. So she was somebody that had our attention tonight. She still went 7 for 15 with our undivided attention. So... Again, just a tremendous win, great win. What a crowd. Gosh, I just want to commend our crowd tonight. Um, couldn't be prouder of our atmosphere that we have for national TV, 8,800. And, uh, and so uh, we'll move on to the next one. I don't even know who we play next, so somebody will have to tell them. So you all know, and I'm just living in my bubble. Okay, so we'll get ready. Where do we play them? Here. Here. Oh, good. Very good. You have to tell your uh, people to take a nap till it's 8 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to break out some Geritol and things like that. But <laughs> stay up. Okay. Right. Questions? Start in the back with Robbie. We talked about this the other day about how I guess you feel like you have, still have a lot of room to grow offensively. You had a season high in turnovers, and Terry was on the bench for a large portion, you still scored. 86 points. Does that surprise you any that you're able to continue to have that consistency offensively as far as you know scoring points? You scored over 80, I think, 11 or 12 games. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's a credit to our guard play. You know, Chloe could easily be up here. She didn't shoot great, but uh, you know, she's our second leading scorer today and had seven big rebounds and uh, three assists. Um, but I, I just think we're skilled. I think Jordan is is really playing at a high level. And, uh, and she's consistent right now. She's practicing at a high level. She's preparing at a high level. And I think that's what happens to good people that work hard and prepare. They, they play well in ball games. And uh, she's, she's my most consistent player on our team right now, I, I think, in uh, energy, juice, the whole nine yards. But, uh, you know, Jazz today was herself in the game. Um, Provides so much energy. So many, I mean, she got six steals. No telling how many other balls she got her hands on. Um, and, of course, Ambrielle is just, she's your energizer bunny. She's just constantly moving and shaking and going to the boards. How many rebounds did she not get that she was fighting for that maybe she didn't quite get, but she gets her hands on. So, um, 
proud of Jessica. Boy, she gave us some big minutes today and uh, played well. Two out of four and three offensive rebounds, played 15 big minutes. And uh, that'll only help her calm her nerves a little bit and let her get used to playing when the lights are on. But, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really pleased with our offensive production. Second quarter, not so much, but, boy, first, third, and fourth was special. Stand the back for Rachel. Coach, how comforting is it to know that when a veteran like Tierra McCowan gets into foul trouble, it's on the bench a little while, and you're still able to put up over 80 points? I know it's a similar question, but that's what I was going to ask. Just, yeah. you, you lost a lot of seniors from last year, and that's your veteran coming back. You're without her. You're still able to put up 80 points. How comforting is that? Yeah, it's, it's really, like I said, it's a, it's a big confidence boost for us. I can tell you, um, she's sitting over there, and, and you got these three seniors that are making, you know, putting Jessica in a position to be successful. You got Chloe who plays like a veteran. And so it's it's really good to know that you can still function and, and really function at a high level, you know, with her over there on the bench. And and so um, really, really pleased with that. At the same time, you know, we've got to we've got to make sure that doesn't happen with Tierra. She's she's had a little more trouble this year than last year. She wasn't in foul trouble very much last year. And she's been a little bit more foul trouble this year, so we need to do a better job, you know. She's got to do a better job. I got to do a better job getting her ready because uh, we don't like her sitting over there. Come in front to Adam. Uh, Andrea, in preparation for the game, uh, when did you find out that you were going to start off guarding Howard and then maybe switch to Morris? How did you feel that you affected her early on, Howard? And how do you think that you did defensively? Because it look really, really looked like one of your better, if not your best, defensive team. Well, thank you. Um, the coaches they gave us a sky report. Um, the first day in, we Jordan and I were also working on Howard and um, Macy, so we were just alternating. We, we had to play both positions against both of them. Um, I think I still have some ways to go. I'm not where I want to be. Um, I'm still trying to <laughs> understand turning and running, making it consistently, not step sliding. Uh, but once I get it down, I think I'll, I'll be all right. Staying in front with Danny. Go, Steve. Henriel, the uh, rebounding piece was always something that uh, people are familiar with you, but offensively you've kind of elevated your game. Where do you feel like you've improved as you've been in Mississippi State offensively? Um, I think offensively, just being more comfortable. Um, I'm still, I still need to work on my ball handling, uh, but I'm more comfortable with the ball. Um, full court, half court, um, I think my range has extended. I shoot more threes now, and I'm comfortable shooting them. Um, I, but the a good piece is that I have guards that help me become more comfortable with being with, with handling the ball. So I think that they've helped me um, become better offensively as well. Jordan, there was that. In the fourth quarter, there was that kind of backdoor play where Chloe found you driving to the basket and everything. And Coach talked a little bit about Chloe. How's she changed? It seems like the offense, you know, is not just going through Tierra now. Now you've got Andreel. Uh, you know, Chloe can move things around. Do you do you feel that there's more options now than maybe even five or ten games ago? Um, yes, I do think <clears throat> Chloe gives us a lot of options. So she's understanding the offense better. She's able to knock down the three, stretch the floor, and allows um, me and Jazz really to drive the ball, knowing that they're hooked up on her and they're hooked up on Tia. So they really just space the floor out for us. Stay in front with Tyler. Coach, it seemed like Kentucky tried to make it a physical game. You guys respond by doubling them up on the glass, more than doubling them up, points in the paint. I know you, you say you like to get out and run, but if that's what teams try to do, try to make it a physical game, how confident are you that you can respond the way you did tonight down the road? Yeah, no, I'm I'm comfortable with that. I think our uh, I think our kids are good in that environment. Um, you know, I I think this is a this is again in a different team. Last year's team was different than any team I'd ever had in 33 years. This one's different in some ways in 34. And one of the things that we do really well is get out and run. If you want to, you know, if you want to make it attract me, you need to be careful because these three out right here can really get out and fill a lane and make some good decisions and finish. And uh, 
So it, it was, it was a tremendous Southeastern Conference basketball game. And uh, really, you know, again, I, I'm comfortable with, with, with a number of ways. This team can, can play in a number of ways. And uh, I was, again, proud of them tonight. I thought, I mean, that was just a really physical game, no question. Come back to Adam. Jazz uh, you might need to keep it coaches in circles and squares there on this squishy, yeah, but when, when you see 24 turnovers for you guys, you see Tierra playing at, what, only 22 minutes. Those aren't really a recipe for success, but still, you guys come out and throw the first punch, you win by 15. What do you think that that says about the team? Do, do you take anything from being able to win despite the first two things that I mentioned? Um, Turnover-wise, I know we can be better. Um, it all starts with me because I have the ball in my hands most of the time. So, uh, I mean, we have a lot of weapons on our team. And for us to score that many points, I mean, I think it's a, it's a big it's a big jump for us. Like, we can do a lot of things. We can do a lot of things offensively. 24 turnovers, just 48 points. We didn't even have a chance to score. That's how we look at it. We, we, you know, Jazz and I, if we got to take care of the ball better. And Trisha, she didn't have 24 turnovers. We had 24 on our team. We all needed to take care of it a little better. But, you know, when we look at turnovers, man, that's a lot of points we left out there. You know, that, that, that we didn't, we didn't have a chance to score. Coach, when you look at the box score, I think you touched on it with the, the number of minutes that your starters had. You had two players off the bench reach double digits. In, in the second game of the SEC uh, schedule, it's going to be a marathon, like you always talk about. What what do you think that the, the other players on the bench, or what do you think that, that you could do to try to get more players into the mix and have those players play more minutes? Well, I think, you know, they're, those kids are all – doing a good job. I mean, Andy should have played tonight, and uh, I just, you know, was careful with the pressure. Uh, I just want to be real careful with with uh, all of our players, but it just felt like having two point guards on the floor tonight with Jordan and, and Jazz was really key for us with all that pressure. I didn't want to take uh, one off the floor, and uh, so uh, that was that was part of that decision. You know, Bree came off and, and played ten big minutes, and uh, she took six shots in ten minutes. I didn't realize that, but did a good job for us. And uh, you know, she continues to to play well. I'm just really, like I said, Jessica's Jessica's really. Uh, I was really happy for her. She kind of struggled uh, at Arkansas. You know, freshman in this league. You know, it's an eye opener sometimes. And uh, I thought she really responded tonight. Did a nice job. Battled. Competed. And she's learned. And she's gonna. Let me tell y'all. That kid's going to be really good. So, really, really proud of her. And, um, you know, guys, let me say this. As proud as I am of my team, and I'm equally disappointed in me getting technical tonight. I'm just beside myself, mad at myself for doing that. I asked my kids to to play with poise and, and handle themselves. And, you know, I get caught up in things trying to, these are my, you know, they're like, well, you know. And, uh, but I, there's, there's no excuse for that. I'm really disappointed in that tonight. There's, that shouldn't have happened. We got all those people in this in the arena. And I just want y'all to know I apologize to you guys, the media, because I'm I, I just I'm not happy about it. And I told the team that I said, hey, you guys got to cover me on those two. I'll help you get two back somewhere down the line. But um, you know, disappointed in myself. Last one in the back. Do you have an attendance goal for the fans this year like you did last season? Well, I'd say we're, I don't know how many home games we had last year. You know, last year cost me a lot of money, so I don't know if that's <laughs> where you're going with this. But, um, you know, it's uh, it's just such a special environment, y'all. I mean, that arena today was electric and uh, special for our players. And, uh, you know, we can't get them in the locker room when the game's over. It takes 45 minutes. Most places, y'all, they have one day where they let their kids stay and sign posters, and that's it. And at Mississippi State, we don't do it that way. And I think that's why we have the fans we have, the crowd we have, and 
it's just really special. And, you know, our kids, man, they're out there laying it on the line, 37, 36, 38, 37. They're probably tired when the game's over, but, man, they sign every autograph. They take every picture with a smile. And, uh, you know, I'm equally proud of them for that. Their impact is far-reaching in, in this community, in this state. And uh, as their coach, I'm, I'm really proud of them for that. So, um, you know, I'll have to look at it see where we are. I, th I would think we're ahead. Uh, I mean, we had 10,000 for Louisiana Lafayette, y'all. It's a non-conference game. It's pretty good, by the way. So, um, 8,800 today, and uh, it was a beautiful day outside. First day we've had, what was that big bright thing in the sky? Anybody know? Because that's the first time I've seen it in the month of Sundays. So, a lot of people could have enjoyed being outside today, and instead they came inside and, and, and uh, provided a great atmosphere for, for both teams. So, really, really proud, of uh, again, of our fans today. And, uh, it was a lot of fun, I know, for our team. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, ladies. All right, Thank you. Praise the Lord and your dogs.